My name is Hobo Tom. And I'm his girlfriend. And this is the Hobo and his girlfriend wrestling webpage. Babe, I'm wearing my wrestling shirt. Why aren't you wearing your wrestling shirt? You need to go put on your wrestling shirt. We'll put it on now so we can start our program. Okay. That looks much better. Yay. Again, welcome to the Hobo. This girlfriend. Web page. Um, just to start off, just want to give a quick little shout out. Again, one day I'll mention later to Southern Pro Lucha Libre. Hopefully, one day they'll be coming here to the great place of Daytona Beach. And today we're going to review Raw from last night, April sixteenth. And again, this was this was kind of an okay show. It was fun. Definitely had its moment. Um, to start off, you had the the Kurt Angle. Well, gets huge pops. Again, his music hits. Da da, you suck. Dun 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 dun. dun, dun. Again, it's a really good. Show. How to, he knows how to get his the pops off on Raw. Again, the signs were kind of funny. I I always enjoy looking at the signs because some of them are, some are creative, some are uh, uh I know the one sign I noticed only because, oh wow, it is tax time today. That's right. Did it's you hear? your taxes well someone says call the irs reigns has not filed his tax so he better file his taxes really soon the irs will come after him and there will be no universal champion people might cheer that though right. so again we start the match again kurt angle comes out again good good promo you have gender he calls out jinder mahal yeah, the Mahal guy looks like a t and I think he's all talk. Of course, he came out with Sunil Singh, whose sole purpose there is just to get beat up, so you know something was going to happen to him eventually. And he kind of runs down, Angle saying, oh, well, I'm a superstar. I should get this. I should get this. I want my own limo. So Kurt Angle says, uh-uh. Slow down there, buddy. If you want anything, send me an email. <laughs> Kurt dot angle at no freaking way dot com. So again, this this was good because then it lets his matches like you have to earn stuff on this show. So again, the first match you have Jeff Hardy versus Jinder Mahal for the U.S. Championship, and and it was a fun match. It was a good cheeseburger match. Again, Jeff Hardy does does his top rope moves, all his flippy stuff, crazy stuff. Things just there to get beat up. Well, Hardy looks like a 70s wannabe wrestler, but he has different good moves. This match was too hard. Well, again, that was a, it was kind of a fun match. This led to a backstage segment with Jinder Mahal. Again, just... Then, all of nowhere, you're... Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun. No way. Jose. Jose. No way. Jose. Jose. Come on, this conga line. And again, just really entertaining. It kind of reiterates that the way Jose's there got called up from NXT. So I guess the bad news is we won't see him in NXT anymore. But again, we'll see him on TV and Raw. And again, you can, again, it's nice being old old like me. I can say, you know what? I remember when I saw him up and close. You know, so from there, we have a Bailey versus Banks match, and it started off kind of friendly and just kind of degraded a little bit. It's a good match. One heart. I gave it. It was a cheat. It was a, it was really a ham sandwich match. I don't know. There, the, there has been a lead up to it. Probably not the time or place for a real proper blow off. Um, again, it started off fairly technical and then just. Graded and there was a couple of botches in there, and then it just turned into a slap fest. So it was okay. The best part about this is that Ruby Riot showed up. The Riot laid the smackathon. 
had Sarah Logan do her pop-up headbutt. Liv Morgan did her kind of code breaker thing. Ruby Riot gave her the riot kick or, or her Lovelace kick or her lack of love kick, whatever it's called nowadays. Again, I'm old. I still remember her as, as Heidi Lovelace. And I won't get over that anytime soon. This led to another match. You had Slater and Rhino versus the Authors of Pain. Um, okay, match. I'll give him one heart. Again, this was another kind of ham sandwich match. Um, the Authors of Pain were just there to really squash Heath Slater. Although I will give Slater and Rhino some credit. The jump, Authors of Pain, gave them the early advantage. But that didn't work out too well. They just kind of tossed Slater around to the outside a couple times. Rhino got on some good offense. And you knew this was an East. They, they were on the East Coast because you can hear the chant of ECW, ECW. Again, it was just kind of a fight squash match. Ham sandwich. It, it, it works. Next, we go on to a Miz TV segment where Miz brings out well, what I hope was going to be El Generico and Kevin Steen. But it was, and Kevin came out saying how they got a letter from Stephanie saying that they're now on the Raw brand, and and it was it was fun. It was okay. It was what it was. From there, we had the Woken match of the night. And this was with Woken, Brady Wyatt, and yeah, Woken. Matt Hardy. Um, Matt Hardy looks like a cult leader. And the other one looks like a devil mountain man. They look they both look like great people. Well again, I gave this this was a cheeseburger match. They took they took on the revival. They have got the jobber entrance. I guess the club's gonna be moving to SmackDown, so the revival now has to fill their role. That's the heart for me. No, it's a cheeseburger match. And he had Matt Hardy being his, his normal wokeness with his delete, delete, delete. Whatever. Obsolete, obsolete, obsolete. Whatever. On to the next match. It was, it was, it was kind of fun. Again, both teams really have great double team, tag team wrestling going on. It was fun. I I do like their new finisher. It's like a windmill twist of fate, a wheelbarrow twist of fate, and it was what it was. It was good. From there, we have a fashion police file. Again, they give t they give fashion tickets out to the bar of Seamus and Cesaro. Oh, the YMC guys. Yeah. Yeah. So again, a, a kind of good backstage segment. Again, just kind of introduces Fan Brizong. Or the fashion police to Raw. And there we had a Roundy Rousey backstage match with Kurt Angle, and Kurt Angle introduced Natalia. Again, there's another call up. Natalia comes up again, face Natalia. I just never realized how short Natalia was. So again, she had on her silly cat ears, and the cat ears came like to run Rousey's I Love Life thing. I'm like, I didn't realize she was that short. Yeah, that is what it was. She still has that kind of whiny, smart mom. I want to say her manager voice. Well, she's trying to stay with the fashion with them cat ears. Maybe. So, again, this led to cut the first woman's match. And here you have Ember Moon versus, versus Mickey James. You know, it was a good match. It was a cheeseburger match. I mean, mainly based on Ember Moon's pretty good and athletic. I mean, Mickey James is, is, is a great seller. Well, I think both of them want to be bad to the bone. I know there has to be one winner. Again, they had the guest commentary by Nia Jax, who's, who's doing good as her new face role. And then Alexa Bliss was just her, her good cowardly heel commentary saying, Oh, she's going to bully me. I'm going to hide in the back. Well, you shouldn't have said all those nasty things you said about Nia Jax. Again, it is what it was. It was, a, it was a good cheeseburger match, though. It was fun. Again, it showcased both wrestlers. There we have a backstage segment. 
taking a look at Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens and how they interact a little bit with The Miz. And again, this was kind of just that backstage segment that kind of sets up things. It kind of teases a, a little bit how The Miz Taraji is going to break up a little bit because The Miz is heading off to SmackDown. I think that, that whole interaction with The Miz and Daniel Bryan should be interesting. It should be really entertaining because they had a really good episode and SmackDown with Talking Smack. Again, that should be really good, I hope. Again, something I'm kind of looking forward to. From there, we had another introduction. We had Dolph Ziggler come in. And, of course, as soon as he shows up, Titus, Worldwide! Whatever. Worldwide! Whatever. Came in and tried to... He said, eh, eh. McIntyre came out, jumped both Titus O'Neil and Apollo Crews. Dana Brooke kind of head, head for the high ground. She got out of that ring pretty quickly, which is amazing. Which I always find amazing. The women who wear heels can run, for some reason, pretty quick in them. She's trying to act all bad, and then she ran away. Yeah, but if I had heels, I'd probably trip and, like, break my shin or something. Well, I use my heels for me. defense. That's why I'm a hobo, Tom. The time I, I'm, half the time I barely wear sandals and again i have to go out there and collect my aluminum so but again, it, clean environment. yes so so yeah, it was good again just kind of introducing both a call from nxt and drew mcintyre or drew galloway and a very quick story about him we went to an i went to an nxt event with my sister and after his match my sister came out followed herself up gave, gave some kissy faces a little bit to drew mcintyre and got her selfie I got it on pit. I got it on my pictures. Oh, that's right. It's called blackmail, folks. Give me your aluminum. So, and it was, it was kind of fun. There you had another promo this time with Roman Reigns. Jeez, he just gets booed. He gets booed out of what they're going to do with him. But the whole crowd turned when Samoa Joe, and you knew it was. Because the whole crowd chants, Joe, 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 Joe. And again, he runs down Roman Reigns, threatens to come down to the ring, beat him up, teases that. He, Samoa Joe is so good on the mic, and, and Reigns, Reigns is good. He's serviceable on the mic. When you put him there with John Cena, The Miz, people who really know him, and Joe's really that good. This led to the second one. Of Mandy Rose from from Absolution. I don't know what's gonna happen to Absolution anymore. Maybe that just might be a tag team since Paige is now the general manager of SmackDown. Natalia. And the only thing I have to I have to say, sweetie, cover yours. Mandy Rose has some has to fix her bottoms. Darn, they were low cut. Why you got your eyes on her low bottoms when they should be on her head? Her eyes all over me. Um, I'm I'm sorry, sweetie. You know I love you, right? I'll give you flowers and other pretty stuff soon. In an hour. 20 minutes from now. But again, the match, again, it was, it was okay. For, 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 for me, it was a ham sandwich. Well, I think Kaya is going to be all bad, but and she can't hold up her weight. She has to have a friend to help her hold up her weight. But I give it one heart. Again, this was kind of a hand. Both, both are really good. Natalia, Natalia won. Mandy Rose in the sharpshooter. And then Sonya Deville, who I still don't like because I still remember when she pinned my princess, Kimberly. So so she'll never get any smiles from me. But she, she came in and started to lay the smack of down upon Natalia. And then Ron Rousey came Again, this is kind of reinforces Natalia's face turn. After this, kind of leading into commercials, they just had Baron Corbin is now going to be on Raw. They didn't show him, though. Kind of cut the, jo the jobber's entrance, I guess, for that. Then we had a, a somewhat fun tag team. Kind of confusing, because I, I just gave it a ham sandwich. It was Brizongo versus The Bar. Really quick match, it seemed. Both teams kind of got, got in a couple moves, move sets. But I just wanted, but 
why the bar lost because Tyler Breeze won with a roll up. Yeah, because bars look like they want to be want to be heroes. But they lost this time. Again, it was a roll up. It was really really quick. I don't know why they're doing this leading up to to the greatest Royal Rumble coming in Saudi Arabia coming to Saudi Arabia when they're going for the tag team titles against the Woken Bray Wyatt. She call him the Wolfman. Oh! And of course you have yeah! Woken oh! Matt Hardy. It would be obsolete. Whatever. Delete. Whatever. Next match. So this led against an Elias promo. I think Elias is on his way out because he started to run down the Raw crowd and said, I'm going to give the greatest performance ever. And Renee Young just said, we don't have time for it. He just started strumming the guitar and, and, and he said, okay, back to the ring. So again, Elias is probably on his way to SmackDown. And now you have the five-man match, the, the ten-man tag team. Really, I just gave this a cheeseburger. I'm not a big fan of, of these clustered tag matches. On one side, you have all of the heels. You have Sammy Owens. Ooh, I said that. Sammy Zayn. Kevin Owens, who still should have been El Generico and Kevin Steen. With The Miz and The Miztourage versus Braun Strowman, Blue Balor, Finn Balor, Seth Rollins. Bobby Lashley, of course, the one and only glorious Bobby Roode. Again, this was this was a, this was a kind of fun match. Again, to me, I went with glorious team. It was too confusing with the who's and who's, but I give it heart. Yeah, this one I just gave a cheeseburger. It was it was fun. It it, it was what it was. All the faces got their move set in. Braun just tossed people around. Lashley did his delayed standing suplex, which just looks incredible because it seems like he holds them up there for like a good three minutes when I know it's really about 30 seconds. Um, I think, so again, it was it was a good cheeseburger match. I think the only, the only other kind of cluster point of this entire three-hour show just kind of felt long. Again, three hours does that to you. Again, whenever you have a death to finish, baby. That means nobody wins, like they did in Sasha Banks Bailey match because of the interference of the Riot Squad. So again, they channeled the the spirit of Dusty Rhodes, the American Dream, the black tight yellow polka wearing tights, trunks wrestler, South. and he says the Dusty finish baby, nobody wins. So again, overall it was good. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Hopefully, subscriber. Our tenth subscriber. Oh yes, we do have people subscribing. We now have six subscribers. And again, when I, when I, whenever you subscribe, please like us. Also, leave a comment. You will get your comment responded to. I'd like, I'd like to thank Nordstrom for his like and sh share and subscribe. Also, Timothy Murtha very much for your subscription um to all those to the four others who did not leave their name when they subscribed it thank you very much when we have our 10th subscriber we are going to have our perfect 10 10 10 10 10 pizza party just to celebrate that and please like share and subscribe also feel free to email at hobo and his girlfriend. And girlfriend. At gmail.com. So it's hobo. And girlfriend. At gmail.com. You will get your comment read online. Again, depending on what you're asking for, I may or may not send you a little little bonus footage. I know it's Nordstrom. I send them bonus footage of Lars Sullivan's entrance. Just his entrance alone. Also, I'd like to shout out to Southern Pro Lucha Libre. One day, hopefully, they will be coming here to the great Daytona area, and I'll have more information on that as I learn about that. So, again, hopefully, the next show we'll see is when NXT comes here for Cinco de Mayo. Again, that should be interesting. And, again, I will always post those results and a little bit extra because that's a live event.